morning. My name is Megan Edwards of Focus Communications, and today we're getting another update from Allura Resources, which trades on the TSX exchange under the symbol ELO. Joining me again today is Allura's Executive VP of Exploration, Dr. Bill Pearson. Bill, thank you for your time today. Oh, my pleasure. Always good to uh, chat. Now, to start things off, for those new to the Aloro story, could you give us an overview of the company and your ISCA ISCA project in Bolivia? Sure, absolutely. Just show the uh, cautionary statement uh, as it's an exploration project. We always have forward looking statements. So, just to give a snapshot of Aloro, we have this very exciting discovery in southern Bolivia in the famous Bolivian uh, tin belt. Uh, we started drilling in 2020. Uh, we've done over 100,000 meters of, of drilling thus far. Uh, and we've been outlined, we've outlined a very, very substantive uh, deposit. Uh, big trigger was in uh, last October, we put out our initial uh, mineral resource estimate, our MRE. Uh, in two different zones here, a polymetallic zone, which is silver, zinc, and lead, 560 million tons here, about 14 grams silver, 0.73 zinc, and 0.28 lead. We have a, and this is an inferred resource, we have an inferred resource on the west side, which is tin, predominantly tin with some silver and lead. Uh, and within this polymetallic zone, we have this higher grade part, which is 132 million tons, which has almost 25 grams silver, 1.11% zinc, and 0.50% uh, lead. And, and keep that in mind because I'm going to return to that point when I talk about the uh, definition drill program. We've done all this very quickly over the last um, three years, raise about 56 million. You can see the contained metal here. It's very substantive, almost 300 million ounces silver, 4 million tons zinc, 1.7 million tons uh, lead, and about 130,000 tons uh, tin. But as I'll show you, that, that can grow uh, substantially. If we look at just briefly the geology here, you're in a massive volcanic edifice. Um, the Isca Isca peak here is about 4,400 meters. The valley's about 3,300. So you're looking at a kilometer relief here. And this is a classic collapsed resurgent caldera. And we have two major phases of mineralization here all of which happened in the Miocene about 13, 14 million years ago. We have an early porphyry tin stage where there's tin, silver, and lead mineralization that came in early, at an earlier stage in the formation of the caldera. Then as the stratovolcano builds up, eventually it becomes unstable as the magma chamber below it. Uh, is exhausted and the whole thing collapses, pressure builds up again. And then we get the second stage, which is a major epithermal stage, which is our polymetallic zone, which is silver, zinc, uh, and lead. It's a huge structural corridor here that runs sort of uh, <clears throat> uh, north, northwest, south, southeast. Uh, it's probably as much as four kilometers long by several kilometers wide. We have inter mineralization down to a kilometer depth. And in terms of timing, mineralization age, and so forth, uh, it's very similar to some of our famous neighbors like Cerro Rico, San Vicente, Troque, Tazna, Tatasi. Um, you can see on this map here, and I'll come back to this, you see that red dashed line. That's the open pit that defined the mineral resource estimate that was done by um, Icon. I'll return to this. So when you think of Isca Isca, this is a huge deposit. We still haven't explored, discovered the limits of the system, as I'll show you. And we've got some interesting new IP results. Um, 
And it's also in the part of the world where we actually have very good logistics. Uh, we're very bullish on Bolivia. We think it's a great address. Uh, and we keep moving this project forward. And it's been a busy few months for Alora, where the company has been focusing on the next phase of development at the Santa Barbara Target. Uh, last time we had you on, we discussed some of your infill drill results. And since then, the company has reported more drill results. But we've also received a bulk tonnage metallurgical data, which returns some exceptional numbers. Uh, can you walk us through some of the results and perhaps how this could impact the future economics of ISCA ISCA? Yeah, absolutely. Here, here's a a plan showing our outline of our uh, of our drilling. Uh, the definition drill program that you're referring to, Megan, is in the red here. And this is where this higher grade resource, 132 million tons, uh, I mentioned. And you can see that a bulk of our drilling out here to the southeast in particular is all at 100 meter spacings here. Um, and, and one of the important things for your listeners to recognize is when I'm drilling wide spaced holes at 100 meters, I'm looking to define the mineralized system, which we obviously have. We have mineralization in every single one of these holes going out there. So the mineralized system is there, but I can't get a reasonable estimate of what the true grade is until I start filling it in. And what the definition drill program has really shown is exactly what we've been uh, saying. It was recognized in the MICON report is, who pointed out that, hey, your high grade area happens to be your best drilled area. And there's no geological reason for that. It's strictly related to the density of drilling. More drill holes, you get a much, much best, better estimate of the high grades, in particular silver, because the high grade silver is in these structures that are are going north, northwest, south, southeast. And the more holes you get, the better sampling you get. And bingo, suddenly your overall average grade uh, goes up. So the definition program was very successful. Uh, we had some terrific results, uh, very high silver, hole 61 was an extremely interesting hole, um, almost 280 grams silver, uh, half a percent lead, pretty good tin value too, over over 60 meters. Uh, we had a very exceptional hole that had a high silver uh, sample over 5,000 grams. And it doesn't take a heck of a lot of this sort of stuff to uh, kick up your overall grade. But I would also remind your listeners that, you know, sampling of the Santa Barbara Adit, where we were able to channel sample uh, return grades over a thousand uh, grams for some 50 meters along strike. So this is the type of structure that is there. But in order to get a decent sampling of it, we need uh, tighter drilling. We also got some nice longer holes. Uh, 66, which had 136 meters, very nice solar, 57, 1.2 zinc, 0.94. So the, the big takeaway from this definition drill program was, as we had were predicting, as we drilled more, we got much better estimate of what the overall true grade likely is, and that goes up. Now I can just just to give people a little idea of kind of the distribution here, that this is a section uh, west of Korea, uh, to east across the deposit looking north. And this shows the distribution of the silver zones. So the, the greater than 30 gram, this is just looking at silver. And you can see the MRE pit. Uh, and you can see how beautifully this is distributed through here. And that we're, as we fill in this drilling, well, guess what? These higher grade areas fill out. And, uh, and as they fill out, of course, the, the grade 
goes up. And if you look at um, tin, tin is concentrated on the west side. We need a lot more drilling there. But again, the definition drilling is filling this out. So we get uh, not only a much better picture of the extent of these zones, but more importantly, we get more detailed um, sampling. We did have an interesting hole here down the, the lower part of where the MRE pit is, um, which had half a percent tin over 23 meters. So uh, this was a, a, an interesting one showing that uh, we're starting to get into um, a more extensive tin system uh, deeper down. But the bottom line from the definition program, really good drill results. Filling in to about 40, 50 meter spacing gives us much better grade. And it's very clear that we can upgrade and expand that original higher grade resource of 132 uh, uh, million tons. And Bill, can you comment on the metallurgy here? Yeah, sure. Well, as as people have been following us know, we've been talking a lot about ore sorting. It's really a game changer. We did a very large scale um, bulk metallurgical sample in our polymetallic zone. We processed uh, about six six point three uh, tons, and this just gives you a little idea of what the flow sheet looks like. Here's your ore sorter. Uh, the, the crushed rock comes along a conveyor belt. This um, X ray camera shoots the particles, and there's a sophisticated program that analyzes the particle and sorts out the density. So it, it'll identify the minerals we want our sulfides, our, our tin that are more dense. And then it tells this gun, okay that particle is a waste and this particle's ore. So the particles of the ore, it activates an air gun and shoots it in here. The, the big thing that this does is in our test results, uh, you know, we start off obviously with 100% waste, 100% metal. After the ore sorting, we can, we can end up eliminating about half the, the waste with very little metal loss. So this is a huge benefit from operating cost point of view and, and capital costs. So uh, that's why we're so keen on, on these tests here. This slide just shows you, so in high grade, you can see the this is all blue, black is extremely dense. When you get to lower grade, the, the red, is is waste and you can see how efficiently it sorts out medium grade is the middle so for instance that particle in the in the medium grade that's just got a little bit of uh dense material uh that would end up being waste but these other ones which have lots of blue would go into the ore bin um so if we look at our bulk test what we did was we drilled two pq they're large diameter holes uh and we sent the entire hole to uh, Wardle Armstrong in um, Cornwall to be crushed and sized. And then that went over to Tomra in, in Germany. And, and of course, our initial focus was on, on the metallurgic testing. But one of the huge things that came back that has big implications for our project is that the head grade calculated from our twin drill hole was 31 grams silver. Uh, but when we looked at the head grade of the metallurgical test, wow, it came back 91, three times higher. So this is telling you that those drill holes are underestimating what's there. So when you take a larger sample, you get better representativity and bingo. So that this is really substantive and it further supports what we've been saying from the definition drill program. This uh, resource, the initial resource on wide space holes is clearly underestimating grade, especially for silver. And when we look at our ore sorting results, we have very nice uh, silver 
silver and lead recovery, 91%, 76% for uh, zinc. And we end up getting rid of 53% of the material. So in other words, we don't have to crush, spend the money crushing and grinding all this stuff because we won't get that much out anyway. And this is uh, just a, a bit of a flow sheet that our metallurgist, Mike Hollywell, who's a real expert on ore sorting put together. But essentially what you do is you, you do the, you, you do different sizing and we did both ore sorting and what's called dense media separation. Uh, and when Tomer do these uh, tests, they're called cascade tests. And what you do is you, you use a series of gates and you start off with the highest intensity and you see what comes off. Then you do a little lower intensity, da 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 da, and you end up uh, figuring out what's the optimum. And if you look at these samples like pre concentrate one, you can see lots of sulfides and whatever. By the time you're down to waste, it's pretty white. So you've pretty much taken all the sulfides out. And this graph here at the bottom is the important thing. So what you're looking at is it's a trade-off from recovery, which is on the left here on your y-axis and weight of product. So what you wanna do is figure out, okay, where's my optimum? You can see when you go up this curve, you know, that your recovery increases very rapidly and then it kind of flattens out. So you're, you're essentially looking for the inflection point on this curve and it's probably somewhere around 35, 40%, which gives us 90% recovery. If we uh, try and get rid of more, it's not gonna add incrementally in recovery. So this data, our, our metallurgist Mike will be using working with our consultants, Mike, on to optimize. So these tests were really, really very, very helpful, not only in terms of characterizing metallurgy, but the fact that bulk sample silver grade was so much higher was huge, huge news. It does not surprise me geologically because the bigger the sample, the better representativity, and you'll definitely get closer to what's the true grade. But it tells you there's a heck of a lot of upside in the grade and the ultimate MRE numbers, once we have a lot more drilling, are clearly going to be higher. So let's fast forward to this week where the company announced results from your IP survey around the major mineralized corridor at Iska Iska. Could you quickly walk us through the news release? Yeah, absolutely. This this was, uh, well, we a very exciting release. We've been saying for some time, look, we haven't defined the limits of this system. And uh, when I first saw these results uh, from my geophysicist, I went, wow. So here again, we're looking at the same section I showed you before. Um, and, and this time I've done it in terms of silver equivalent. This is silver equivalent with silver, zinc, and lead, just so we can look at the overall distribution. And you can see uh, the concentration of values in the in the green there. And that's superimposed on the orange and red, which is the chargeability. So now your listeners would say, what the heck is chargeability? Well, when you do a induced polarization survey, what you do is you set out a series of dipoles. Uh, in our case, it was 50 meter dipoles. And you shoot a current into the ground for two seconds. Then you shut the current off and you record what, what response do you get back. So. If you shoot current into a rock that has no sulfides, you'll get no response. It's like turning your light switch off. But if you have sulfides in there, like pyrite, like galena, what happens is each little grain of sulfide acts like a little battery. So it essentially, when the, the current goes in, it's like a little battery, it holds on to the current. And, and we're talking milliseconds here. So there's a delayed response. So typically the window that the geophysicists measure is usually about um, a millisecond 
a second, I should say, after they turn the current off. So what happens is that you don't get an instant light bulb. Okay, I turned my light bulb off and it went off. What happens is you get a curve. And that curve is the chargeability. And you can see that the, the purpley pinky areas here are the highest chargeability. And what is really, really significant at Iska Iska is where we get high grades of silver, zinc, and lead. Well, those happen to be also the high chargeability areas. So it, you can see that how this chargeability correlates beautifully with the mineralization here. And you can see here that this huge anomaly here is outside the MRE. We have a zero drilling out here. So this is telling you, my goodness, folks, this thing continues like freight train. There's at least another 600 uh, meters of strike length. Um, so that this, this is really uh, a tremendous uh, step forward because we know if we drill high chargeability anomalies, we have lots of data, both downhole geophysics, surface geophysics, plus obviously the drilling results that this will certainly produce some a very nice uh, values once we drill it. Now, if we look at it in plan view, this really brings this out. This little back circle here is the lower part of our MRE pit. And look at that anomaly. I mean, my goodness, it's going like a freight train. And on the, the right-hand side, this is the silver equivalent again. And you can see that it's it's a no-brainer. This, this thing just keeps going. And remember our previous drilling, uh, we have a few holes down here, but we're basically over the top of this. So th this shows you that we have nowhere, we are nowhere near defining the limits of this. But the exciting thing is that this is a very strong anomaly. In fact, it is very possible this might end up being um, the highest grade area of the deposit. I, I personally think it's another center on this huge structural corridor. So very exciting target, and we have no drill holes in it. So um, the, the, this is uh really remarkable results i i i mean i've been in this game for 50 years i've done lots of geophysics and boy oh boy the correlation of the chargeability with mineralization and the extent of it is absolutely uh phenomenal and it it's clearly a no-brainer we will outline more mineralization when we eventually drill this and i expect it will be higher grade mineralization the more grade we can um confirm the higher grade and the most leveraged metal is silver by far uh, obviously that has a major potential positive impact on any potential economic uh, scenario so this was a really exciting end to a highly productive program we had great definition drill results our metallurgical tests uh, went very well, not only confirming the ore sorting is very viable and also dense media separation and the much higher silver result from the bulk sample. And then as a, sort of our hat trick here, well, guess what? We haven't even approached the limit of this zone and we have very, very strong evidence that this well mineralized zone continues on for another 600 plus meters. So overall been a really tremendous program for us. Now with such a large target outside the MRE pit, does this change the company's strategy over the near term as this could potentially be a major target for more high grade mineralization at ISCA ISCA? Well, I think we, we clearly need more definition drilling on the west side. Um, in particular uh, to outline a really really strong tin resource we'd like to outline something that's greater than 0.2 percent tin we certainly think that's very very possible but at the same time we also want to do some drilling on that new target because 
another major high grade area here, if we can confirm that, obviously has uh, important economic considerations. Uh, maybe it's possible to have two starter pits. At this point, we're not sure until we get some drill holes in. So it definitely opens up some possibility. But as you know, grade is king. And the indications here are that we've got a tremendous target that um, could give us another important higher grade area in this immense system. So uh, I'm, I'm delighted how this program has gone. Uh, and I think it sets the stage for uh, um, uh, a tremendous opportunities going forward to continue to grow and upgrade this amazing deposit. And before we let you go, are there any final thoughts you'd like to leave our listeners on the latest developments from Iska? Well, I guess my final thought would be stay tuned. This is an incredible system. Every press release we keep putting out continues to grow, expand, and upgrade this deposit. And there's no doubt in my mind that further work will continue to enhance uh and, and and upgrade and uh i think answer the concerns that people had well it seems low grade well that's not a function of the deposit it's a function of the amount of drilling it's too wide space to give you an average grade uh people well will the ore sorting work we now have a definitive bulk test 6.3 tons that says this technique works very well and Tomer has some 320 installations around the world, operations that process up to 40,000 tons a day using ore sorting. And this technology is just advancing in leaps and bounds. And we still haven't defined the limits of this and the strong correlation between high chargeability and high grades is phenomenal. Uh, and it clearly indicates that we've got a fabulous target here where we can not only extend the mineralization but very likely outgrade outline another major higher grade area that obviously will enhance the potential overall picture well thank you so much for your time today bill and we look forward to having you back on soon with more updates always a pleasure thanks a lot